the battle begins. The champions focus on saving the prince, while the paladins go toe to toe with the Morning Stars and their Lich King. Piper maneuvered herself between the king and his son, making her his prime target. She managed to avoid his paralyzing touch and is soon backed up by Flynn and his returning hammer as the cleric brings reinforcements from the Temple of Shining Morning. Conflicted, Karenina cast a spell magic on the king, revealing the walking corpse below the illusion. Jeltor attempted to pull the prince away, but drew the king's ire in the process. Feeling the pressure, King Sarath drops a cloud kill around himself as well as the paralyzed Piper. Now masked by the cloud, he fired ray after ray at Jeltor as the halfling tried to fly off with his son, inevitably dropping him to the ground. King Sarath rushed in to grab his son and vanished in shadow, leaving the champions bruised, bloodied, and pondering the extent of his plans for the prince. So you are standing in the now stunned silence of the throne room. The king vanished with Corum. Piper paralyzed in the arms of Vicar Milan. Jeltor unconscious on the ground. And the rest of you just kind of standing there with that dull sense of confusion. Oh dear. And with those words, people chaos. burst into action. Not not chaos. It's actually the exact opposite of chaos. Oh, okay. It is pandemonium, but it's still like organized chaos. The clerics go to the tend to the wounded. Um, the paladins start securing the rooms. The guards that you were fighting, the morning stars. They still look confused, like they're rubbing their temples, unsure of what's going on. And people are mobilizing, they're organizing in that instantaneous chaos just happened, disaster just happened, post-crisis movement. I wouldn't move, I hit you pretty hard on the head, sorry. Yeah, no, you also, you bit my leg, but that's really not the problem I'm having right now. Which... When a gnome bites you on the leg and that's not the problem. Wow, my life has been fucked up. I don't even remember biting your leg. That's not making things better. Eh. Huh. Oh well. <laughs> Here's a friendship bracelet. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Karenina is um, kind of the, the center of the, the whirlwind, the center of the tornado. Um... She's she's standing, you know, kind of in the middle of the room. She's sort of people are coming up to her. She's giving them quick directions. They're they're walking away. She's calling out at people and and pointing them at places. She, she almost looks like a conductor. Yes, um, mum. They're off. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you do hear above the din. Uh, and 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 make sure you get Korth and Dancia here immediately. They're clearly not guilty. Get them here now. Right away, Mum. And then she bustles to do other things. Well, you see the um, you see the clerics that were there, the clerics of Molot that came with Flynn. They are organizing with some of the guard, taking like the badly wounded. So Jeltor being one of them, the guards being the Morning Stars being others, taking them towards the infirmary. Piper, your paralysis wears off at this point, <sighs> so you're able to. Like stand, Thank and goodness. you can either go with them or wave them off. That's your choice. I kind of want to stay to see what goes on, but I, I don't want Jeltor to be by himself, so I'll go with him for now. All right, so Piper, you are taken off to go see a medic. As Piper is kind of going off with the medics and just kind of gesturing to all of your group as a general body, <laughs> yeah, you also hear Corona and. Uh, uh, when you're all cleaned up, I need you to uh, stay in one of our waiting rooms. Do not leave. Of course. People will be in to talk to you. Don't you worry. And then she fluffs off to go do. And she's she's talking to some somebody with like epaulets. They look very important. Um, and she kind of uh, gets lost in the din. And uh, about. Ten or so minutes later, uh, Korth comes striding in, still in his 
his nightgown, even though, you know, he has people behind him like, sir, sir, your armor, your armor. No time. <laughs> he kind of walks in. So there's this very imposing man standing there in a long white kind of gown with that. Oh, like that. in a nasty nightgown. It's not nasty. It's well, he was in the, uh, the dungeon. So, yeah, and he walks up and he comes over to your group. Well, it seems you survived, which is an impressive feat in and of itself. Yeah, we do that sometimes. I feel like you do that all the time, considering you're still standing here, but... I completely forgot that it's just me and Craig. So... It's just you and Craig. And Francois, yes. to be fair. Do not forget about me. Monsieur Chat. Yeah, I will not be uh, forgetting about you. You, in particular, I'm going to need. Uh... Are you talking to Francois? Francois. Oh. He goes, oh, yes, we, we, the paperwork. Well, the paperwork and the debriefing. I'm going to put you with my second, and he's going to take all the information from everything you guys uncovered. Well, that is fantastic, because I have quite a lot to say about the contents of your armory in your room. But, uh, so it is. So it shall go. At that point, Craig kind of tugs on Francois, uh, I guess pant leg or coat or whatever he is on and literally goes don't forget to ask him whether it's an axe or a sword uh francois kind of like because he's tall so he kind of like um like gets down on like squats on his knee you know like when you're talking like a kid Mm -hmm. um yeah well yeah sure um but so he's so he's eye level and he like like leans in conspiratorially he's like but you and i both know that we should not take this information at face value Never. And he kind of like gives you like a little fist bump. I give him a fist bump and also Craig goes, you're probably going to be leaving soon. So here's a gift for you. And he kind of just puts uh, the friendship bracelet in his hands. I enjoyed working with you. Hopefully we will work together again. I love you. <laughs> um, Francois is like, <laughs> he, he, he's not really sure how to take this. Like, I love you. He's pushing it a little bit. Um, but he, he like holds the friendship bracelet in his hand and he, he slips it in his coat and he says, you might have a good career as an, as a detective ahead of you. Keep up the good work, little prickle, little Craig. And he kind of like, and he gets up and he, he like nods at, at, he nods at Scratch. He kind of like eyes him up and down and he's still like, all right, he's still a cat. Um, and he's like, uh, very well. Let us, let us get on with the fun part of the investigation. He kind of rolls his eyes and sweeps off to wherever it is he goes. If He I, he probably doesn't have an office. His office is absolutely like a broom closet somewhere. Yeah, one of Korth's men will take him to where the guard... Basically, the, not the guard room, but like where they do their paperwork and office stuff to debrief you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that leaves... The two of you with Korth, which you don't see Dancia yet, but Korth is there and he's... So, you were right about him being the bad guy. We weren't expecting him to be a lich, but uh, yes. Yeah, him being a skeleton was uh, surprising to a lot of people, I'm sure. Yeah, kind of explains the dumbfounded look on the guard's face who let me out of the cage. Yeah. Oh, I think I bit that one. Tom, I'm sorry. And we're pretty sure that he doesn't have rabies, so he should be okay. I like the fact that you're pretty sure. I had my shots. I think. Did I have my shots? We don't have the paperwork for the shots. <laughs> anyway. So, he just vanished. Yeah, he, uh... There was smoke and then... Turned into Oof. a shadow and, uh, disappeared and took the prince with him. Damn it. Well, there's few places he could go that'd be safe. I'm gonna have my men search the castle, but it's likely he didn't stay here. Yeah, he seemed to be done with the place. <clears throat> there's only one place I can think he'd end up going. That would be Fort Black Dove. It was one of our outposts between here and the wilds of the north. After the war with the orcs was over, we didn't really need to keep it maintained or manned, so it's a perfect escape for anyone who wants to hole up for a while. Okay. 
So you think he's hiding there? Well, uh, that's our next stop. I don't know for sure, but with an army at our front gate, I don't want anything at our back. It'd be good if you and your group could go and check there while we check the city itself. Yeah, we uh, we all need to rest up, though, but... Uh... That's perfectly understandable. We'll have when Dancia finishes getting herself together. Wow. We'll have her and her clerics patch you up and after you've rested, send you on your way. Okay. Now, if you excuse me, I have things that I need to attend to, according to my assistant. One of those is getting dressed. <laughs> and he'll stride off. You look fine to me. I don't know. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> You're welcome. The next thing I would do is go find Piper. So I'm going to tag along with uh, my uh, chaperone right now because uh, that's usually what I'm told to do. So I'm going to find a guard and uh, ask them where the infirmary is. That's easy enough to direct you. And uh, I'll go find the others. Uh, hey. You doing okay? Yeah, I just um was a little... Craig just gives Piper a hug. I'll hug you. I hope you're okay. I'm okay. He's he's doing his best to be, he know he can see you're hurt, so he's trying really hard not to like overdo it. Just kind of ruffle the top of your mohawk. <laughs> I'm okay. I just needed a a moment to breathe. Mm. Something besides poison gas. Yes, something besides poison gas. That usually helps. I guess, is Jeltor still unconscious? He's There's... unconscious being tended to, yes. Yeah, they're they're still working okay. on him. I got my bandages, I'm I'm good. Magical healing is still a rarity, and since his life is not in immediate danger... They have him stable. Okay. Get up so and... Oh, we need to get some rest, and then we need to go to Fort Black Dove to fight an army or to properly kill a lich? Well, really, Korth is sending you there to check and see if the lich is there. <laughs> yes, that's what he's saying. I'm saying what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, the usual. No pressure or anything. Suspension of disbelief, Matthew. Suspension of disbelief. Uh, but yes, we should probably get some rest. I should thank Flynn for getting the help and helping, because that was honestly clutch, if that's a word that we can use here. Stop trying to make that happen. Clutch isn't gonna happen. Why do you keep trying to make this a thing? No, that's fetch, darling, and that is always a thing. But his assistance came in, came in a pinch, and it was clutch. It was helpful. Well, once you're doing better, you can go talk to him. I'm, I'm bandaged. I'm fine. It's just talking. It's just talking. Yes. I ask, like, a cleric who's nearby. Is she good to go? Uh, yeah, but she should probably still get some rest. We could use the bed, though. All right. Out of that bed, give it to someone okay. else. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> And you can see uh, from the holy symbol around his neck, he's one of the ones that Flynn brought with him. And thank you for your help, by the way. Of course. When uh, the prodigal son comes in and starts making demands, people listen. <laughs> uh, one, one day, yeah. One day I would like to hear that story. I don't think now is the time, though. Nah, nah. We got work to do. He's, like, grinding herbs at the moment, getting ready to make a, uh... Salve. Salve. Thank you. So you guys head back to your rooms to rest. And you know what? I'll say you get a nice long rest there, even though technically it's within the 24-hour period. Fuck that rule. Thank you. <laughs> you're being healed by people and whatnot, and it's not like you're getting spells back. Yeah, that's a valid point. <laughs> that was uncalled for. You mean I get my hellish rebuke back? That's there nice. There you go. You do get a spell back. Look at that. The one you can do. Thanks. Thanks for that. Very far away, you hear Karen in a cackle. 
And it's probably about midday at this point when there's a knock at your door. I got it. Craig <laughs> opens the door. Hi. There's a guard standing there who like doesn't see you at first. And then you yell hi and he looks down. Oh, um, there, there's uh, someone from the- Scratch, someone's here to see you. And just okay. walks away. It, yes. Uh, there's someone here from the Silk Glove Society. I've never heard of them, but he says his name is Bryn Lightfeather. Okay. Yeah, bring him in. Alrighty. So, strolling into the room is a short halfling. He's a little round in the belly, wearing a uh, bright blue coat, a wide-brimmed hat with a very long plume sticking out of the top. He's a little ruddy in the cheek, and he kind of is walt waltzing in with his thumbs in his pockets, kind of trying to make himself taller, but you all know that no matter how hard he tries. <laughs> and he comes walking in, and behind him is another figure. Which, Sarah, if you may. Um, well, physically, they look... Their, their facial features are, like, almost very nondescript in the sense that, like, you could, you would just, like, look at this person in the street and just not remember who they were and be like, eh, whatever, like, like, brown hair, brown eyes, like, just no, just, you know, okay, just a random person. They're, like, about five feet tall, but they look like they're youngish. They're clearly uh, somewhere in their awkward uh, teens or twenties, it's it's difficult to say, but they're they're very skinny, so they physically look like a gangly sort of like a boy who hasn't hit his growth spurt yet. But that's honestly the most notable thing about them, and they're wearing a just plain white shirt, plain trousers, and then they have like a a hooded cloak, like a dark hooded cloak. And their cloak is is held closed with just like a plain, um, you know, just like a regular like steel pin, like those big kind of steel pins, but then uh, em embellished on it, or probably just like <laughs> tied onto it, is a, a wooden button that is shaped like a glove. A very roughly carved <laughs> glove. The halfling's gonna come in. Ah, good morning to all of you, if that uh, term still applies. I'd say I'm more of a night owl myself, so. <laughs> Who are you? Uh -huh. Have we met? You must be Bryn. I am Bryn. We haven't met, darling. No, we haven't met. Uh, you see. No, we haven't. I have been. We uh... stood outside. What was that? I said we stood outside while you spoke with Jeltor. That's right. You guys came to the friendly face while he came to meet me. Uh huh. Sat with uh, friends of mine. But let's cut to the chase, shall we? See, uh, the city is going to be under attack pretty soon, considering my guild's only just getting its feet underneath it. We, uh, we don't want the city to, to get destroyed. So, simply put, we're going to be needing to, uh, have Jeltor uphold his end of the contract that he signed what, with us. What contract is that, exactly? Oh, he, he decided to take membership up with our guild, and I don't think that you would be all that opposed to this particular contract, as uh, he's going to be helping us fortify the, the systems of egress throughout the city from invaders. Well, what about our adventures? <laughs> Maybe start with your wall. <laughs> Ooh. That Ooh. is a very important job, as I kind of like elbow scratch in the side. Yeah, the the wall's <laughs> not my particular uh, point of uh, point of egress. I was thinking more uh, sewer tunnels? systems and tunnels. subterranean. <laughs> subterranean. But thank you, thank you, TP. I appreciate that. Uh, however, far be it from anyone to say that. Uh, Bryn Lightfeather leaves his friends' friends in the lurch. I would like to introduce you all, or have him introduce himself, 
to my associate here. Hey guys. Um, your name, kid? Hi. Oh, sorry. Uh, mm, uh yeah, uh, my, my name is Teapot, uh, but everyone calls me TP. Craig just walks over, uh, sniffs I'm, him I'm a here little. To, I'm here to be, um, what'd you call it, boss? You're, you're, a temp? You're, yeah, you're a temp. So, so TP is an intern with our organization. He hasn't quite worked his way up the ranks yet. Uh, not to say he's not good at what he does. He, he shows a lot of promise, but, uh... Well, we don't want to leave you in the lurch. We need Jeltor. We heard you were leaving. We can't afford to lose him right now. That, um, that makes sense. And that's, it's important to protect the people here. Yeah. Yeah, so the Silk Love Society, it wants to make sure that we are known among the city as this new guild that is willing to work with the populace, not against it. You're on an important mission. We make sure you have the tools you need. And as a show of good faith, I've heard from a little birdie that you're heading up towards Fort Black Dove. It seems to be that way, yes. It was a spy. Yeah, you don't tell them that, kid. You don't tell them they that. They know. But you don't say... Okay, there's the quiet part. Sorry, boss. Sorry. Loud. Okay. Sorry, boss. You're still learning. You're still learning. You're still learning. <laughs> All right, this is why we're not sending him on the the missions that involve talking to the people. You're going up to the fort. Shouldn't be anything there. There's a, there's a, we know the outline of Fort Black Dove as we had looked into it as a potential point of, um. Uh, a target? No, no, there's nothing there we're taking. As, as a, a, a headquarters, per se. Uh. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people had that idea. Yeah, yeah, another reason why I'm glad we didn't do it. <laughs> but we did scout it out, but it was a little far out of our way, so it wasn't really worth doing anything. We found a much nicer uh, establishment. Your uh, your Nissa's cousin, three three times removed, once whatever. I don't. I think it, I think it's actually like four times, and then through marriage on my. Yeah, so that yeah, whatever, kid. Uh, anyway, we scouted the joint, and. You can try to get in through the front door, but there's a portcullis there that uh, I can tell you got some some strapping individuals in this group. Nice and strong. Thanks. Uh, Which one? Hi. I was going to say the cat, but... Uh, Craig's literally right up to TP, just kind of looking, at, just sniffing around him and everything, just like lifting his leg, like just, he, just inspecting him and just... Very strange Craig way. I'm sorry, Craig is lifting his leg or Craig is lifting No, lifting lifting TP's leg. Uh yeah. Can I help you? That is one disturbingly muscular child. Anyway. I thought it might behoove you to know that on the western wall there is a sewer grate that you can move aside and it will take you right into the basement of the fort. I see. Hmm. A nice, uh, quiet entry point, one that you can use that most people don't know is there. That is good to know. I just kind of, like, jot it down in my little notebook. That would certainly make things easier, yes. Oh, Sending Craig up to the front door and pulling it open with all his strength. Well, it actually takes two people to open the portcullis because you need to use uh, one person on each chain, but... Uh... And yet, he <laughs> do it. It terrifies me to some point, some level. But since we're taking your master thief, dragon slayer, what you call it, and we're just giving you the kid, figured that information makes us square. It does. Thank you, Bryn. You're quite welcome. Yes. Now I have a meeting with a Miss Karenina, and you see him like stretch out his suspenders a little bit. Looks like Bryn Lightfeather is moving up in the world. <coughs> anyway, I'm gonna leave you with this kid. Have a lovely time. Have a lovely meeting, Bryn. She is an absolutely darling person. Oh, I heard a lot about her personality, and let me tell you, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. I love it. I love it. 
Okay, uh, uh, thank, thanks, boss. You're welcome. Be good, TP. But not too good. You know what I mean. Not, no, I don't, um, I don't quite. And you walk away. <laughs> yep, just walk away. <laughs> that, just sighing despondently. Ah, kid. So? Hi. I'm Piper. Teapot, teapot kind of like l- looks around, kind of like uh, very deer, deer in the headlights, kind of like not really sure what to like make of you guys. Craig's still sniffing and like just inspecting, kind of climbs on the shoulders and just like looking you in the face. But you're climbing? Going to try. I'm going to try. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, if you try to climb up uh, Teapot's shoulders, you can be like, hey, hey, um, uh, I don't know. Can you maybe give me a little uh, personal space, please? What's personal space? Uh, he looks over. I mean, you don't. Uh, hi. Can you? Uh, and he like down. He's like hesitating to like kind of pick you up. Okay. And put you down. <laughs> okay. No, pretty much scratch those down. He's like, okay. I'm just checking him out. If he's replacing Gel Tor, I don't know if I trust him. Trust him yet. And he tries to do the Francois voice, but he kind of hurts his throat trying to do it. How does he speak like that? That's just his voice, darling. Oh. Anyway. So, what exactly is it that you do? Oh, uh, 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 most of the, um, uh, uh, basics, you know, I can, uh, pick locks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm... I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, the, the, the best at uh, sneaking around, but I have, you know, I have my my second level certification in sneaking, and uh, I'm also um, uh, fast. Fast. <laughs> really? Uh, Do you want to have a race? Perhaps later, Craig? No. Later. Not a no, it's a later. Okay... Well, you better get your stuff ready. We're leaving soon. Oh, I came prepared. I have everything with me. Hmm. So, uh, let's go find Korth. Right. Well, as you go down to where Korth is, he's kind of organizing everything in the throne room. You see Dancia is there as well. She's uh, setting up the, the clerics. Korth is speaking with a few people, including Flynn, actually. Uh, who you would think would normally be with the clerics, but he doesn't currently have his power, so he's more of a fighter at this point. You see in one corner, Karenina speaking with Bryn. (laughs) And Bryn has a wide smile on his face. Karenina, she has a very tired look. (laughs) Very neutral face, but... Well, you also have probably been up since. Like, you haven't gone to sleep. Oh, yeah. We also woke you up in, like, the middle of the night with all this stuff. Yeah. So, yes, you have that stern appearance, but you look tired. Like, Mm. why is this halfling talking to me? Sleepy tired. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Sleepy bitch face. (laughs) Sleepy bitch face. Kind of, yeah. So you guys can go wherever you'd like in this room to talk to whomever you like. I'm going to go up to Korth. And join them, just kind of gently place a hand on, like, Flynn's back. He kind of looks over. Feeling better? Much. Thank you for earlier, by the way. Not a problem. You sent me off so fast to get Melon. Seemed important and seemed like there was going to be a fight, so... Kind of been itching to be a part of one for a while. Well, looks like you'll be part of a bigger one now. And we're lucky to have you. Well, it's just nice being useful again. And Korth will turn. Ah, good. Groups all together, except he kind of looks at UTP as like, and a new face. Uh, I'm a a temp. Jeltor was tapped to help with the city's defenses. Ah, right, that Silk Love guy, right. Yes. Well, he, uh, he, you see that the map on the table is the map of the city. He rolls that one up and he pulls out a different one. 
that shows the north end of the city and the trail that you remember taking part way when you mm -hmm. went to go to fight the gnolls. But Karenina talk, took you to a side path. Yeah. The road continues going north to a fort. And so mm -hmm. he'll unroll that and show that map. This is about a day's journey to the fort. Now, we don't know if he would be able to teleport his way all the way there. Part of it had to have been on foot. We don't know how long he's been there or what he's been doing in there since there, if he's there. We need to make sure that he isn't there. If he's in the city, I have my men searching for him. If he's in the fort, I need you to locate him. If you can get the prince away from him to safety, that is the most important thing. We need the prince back. Currently, it's myself, Dancia, and Karenina running mace, and there is an army at our doorstep. We need a king. Corum's what we got. Right. If nothing else, having a king gives the people hope. All right, so we will head to Fort Black Dove, investigate, locate the king. If he's there, hopefully rescue the prince. Should be fine. Should be a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. If he's there, get Coram out. Yes. If he's not, send word back. Get back here as quickly as you can. My men are scouring the city. That weird little Bryn man said his men are going to check the sewers. Is there a fast way for us to contact you all if we find him? I mean... Or, or faster... I can give you a, a pigeon. I'm not magic one. The Karenina might have something in her stash. I don't know, but we tend to communicate with carrier pigeons. I have some men who are going to be going out into the forest. So they'll be closer. Well, he takes off a pendant and hands it to you. And you see it's um, the symbol of mace. Mm hmm. If you come across anyone who says they're members of the Blackened Sun, show them that and tell them Korth is calling them back to the city. The king was a traitor, and we need to fight. Uh, when he hears the king was a traitor, TP's eyes go a little wider. But he doesn't say anything. Korth is calling them back to the city. The king was a traitor. We're ready to fight. Okay. The reason that uh, the Blackened Sons left was because... That king wasn't willing to go to war against these invaders. Right. I just wanted to make sure that I had your your statement correct for if and when we run across them. Right. Uh, I think Dancia might have some things for you before you head out. Is there anything else you need? I... Or anything else you'd like to take with you on your way up? I kind of look too Scratch and Craig. Uh... We've got everything. I think we have everything. We have our wits about us. <laughs> Dear God. Anyway. <laughs> Certainly got the moxie at the very least. Moxie, I'll give you. Oh, I'm sorry. Did it spell? Just go talk to Dancia. Let's go just talk and talk with Dancia real quick. As they shoo Craig away. Bye. <laughs> just kind of like kiss Flynn's cheek. Be safe. I should probably be telling you that. <laughs> See you soon? Here's hoping. Follow them to Dancia. And so Dancia is currently handing leather pouches out to people. And as you approach, she turns around and goes, Oh, uh, hello. Yes, um. Hey. So you're heading up to Fort Black Dove. Yes. Yes. I wanted to provide you with one of these. And she hands you guys a leather pouch. This is given to all of the clerics, um, since our magic has been a little unreliable as of late. And as you open it, you see four potions of healing in vials. Excellent. So one to each of us. Yes, this way, in case the magic is failing and someone is dying, the potion can help. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if it wasn't for you, I might be hanging by my neck right now. Huh. Yes, you would have been. Mm. Make an intimidation check. <laughs> Jeez. 
18. Oh yeah, she is cowed. Like, yeah. Don't don't listen to him. We need you to be calm and in control because the city needs you, okay? Right. The city needs me. City Breathe. Needs me. And she just kind of like Okay. And she doesn't look at Scratch at all. She just kind of goes, good luck, and turns her back again and starts handing out more of the pouches and giving directives to the clerics and other healers that are there. Not all of them are full-fledged clerics. Mm-hmm. As we walk away. Really, Scratch? Really? What? Last time we saw her, she was crying like a child. Yes, but now she is one of the three people running Nice at the moment. And that is what scares me. Uh, Teapot kind of is like, I don't know, she seemed nice to me. He like blushes a little. (laughs) Scratch likes being catty. You don't say. (laughs) And as you leave, you are directed to the north gate. As you remember, last time uh, you left to go onto this road, you had to go out the southern gate and take Mm -hmm. a cart around because the north gate is under construction. And you see that the north gate's construction is being ripped away, like the scaffolding and everything is being ripped away, to reveal that no work had been done at all. It was just set up as a barricade, almost. Ew. Almost like to stop someone from following someone. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. And you're able to leave out of the northern gate. All right. And before you is the long road to Fort Black Dove. This has been the Reliably Chaotic Podcast. Champions of Solane is an original Dungeons & Dragons adventure written by Brian Scharf using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set published by Wizards of the Coast. My name is Brian Sharp, and I've been your DM. You can reach me at ReliableDM on Twitter. My name is Nicole Summers, and I play Piper. This is Matthew Reed, and I play Scratch. This is Andrew Brown, and I play Craig. Uh, this is uh, Sarah, and I played Teapot, uh, also known as TP. Theme music by Adrian Von Ziegler. All other music by Kevin McLeod on the Incompetech website and Adrian Von Ziegler. Detailed information about music in this episode is provided in its description. Music for this episode was selected by Nicole Summers. The episode was edited by Matthew Reed with assistance from Sarah. Contact us on Twitter at ReliablyChaotic, email us at ReliablyChaotic at gmail.com, or join our Discord server by following the link in our description. If you like our show and would like to support us, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash reliably chaotic or by leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It really does help a lot. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you again in our next adventure. Uh, I gotta make sure I get her voice. <laughs> what? Hold on. Correct. Oh, mm. oh, Piper, you suck. Mm. There she is. All right. <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! (laughs) That's your capture phrase.